what is up youtube have i got a video today oh my goodness it's so good i don't know where to start so let me start off by giving you the outline general outline of my line of thinking today the body recycles some of its vitamins minerals and phytonutrients right and exercise might affect the quantity of vitamins and minerals recycled in the body in the human body and also several B complex vitamins, for example, play a role in generating ATP. So if you understand who I am and what I do here, you might have a good idea of where I'm going with this. For those of you who don't know, my name is Smitty. I trained for over 18 months before attempting and completing my first Olympic distance triathlon. And something really interesting happened during one year of the triathlon. So I'm doing this century ride as part of my training, right? For the whole year so my training begins in about april and it concludes in about september october right so it's probably beginning of september we're training for this uh century ride and usually on saturdays i'm riding about 80 miles a week up until the century ride and the century ride of course is 100 miles well the first century ride i did i volunteered to do a time trial for everyone who did the century rides everyone came through right two or three minutes apart and I, you know, gave them their time as they came through the first five, 10 miles, whatever, that I proceeded to ride the 100 miles on my own, solo, right? And an interesting thing happened. When I got from about mile 85 through, I was able to sustain about a 26 to 27 mile per hour um, ride into the wind. The wind was coming from the east. Uh, which is really different, right, for this time of the year. Coming from the east wind, I'm riding into the wind at 26 miles an hour, and I'm sustaining it up to 27. And I could never do that during the regular season. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, what were some of the things that uh, allowed me to ride so well. And I finally discovered it. This happened. This ride was, like, years ago. I finally discovered it through this research. This is what's going on. So, um Let's dive deep into the research quickly. So I asked my friendly chat TTP enabled app questions about it. So the questions are around nutrient recycling because um, also if you notice in any of my videos, I talk a lot about B complex vitamins and how they're good for helping you uh, burn energy more efficiently. So, and as a cyclist, uh, when I'm on a bike, I usually eat and then take B complex vitamins uh, three to four hours before I get on a bike and. It, yeah, uh, I it's like rocket shoe for me. So the first question I asked my chat GTP enabled that call AI was does the body recycle some of its vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients? Cite at least three relevant sources in MLA format. And it goes, yes, the body does recycle some of its vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. Here are three relevant resources that discuss this topic. These sources explain how the body recycles nutrients, including how the liver and kidneys recycle vitamins and minerals how the intestinal microbiota play a role in nutrient recycling and how the body can reuse vital nutrients through a process called enterohepatic circulation. Now, if you're new to fitness, you know, one thing you probably should hear in this video, if you hear nothing else, is that you're, if you start supplementing or when you start supplementing, you should realize that there's gotta be a time where it tapers off, right? So if you've never exercised before or never taken supplements, and you're starting to take supplements to get healthy, right? You're gonna reach a point where you're gonna you're gonna notice the immediate effects, and then it picks are gonna taper off, and there are gonna be times where you probably don't need to supplement as much because you can't feel that boost that you that you're looking for, or you can't feel that change in your body that you're looking for, right? So, for example, when I take uh, D cup, when I take vitamin D. Uh, typically, my nose clears up. Like I can breathe freely through my nose, and there's less inflammation going through my nose, and my breathing is better when I take consistent vitamin D. But then there comes a point of diminishing returns where taking the vitamin D doesn't doesn't uh, do that, and it has typically it's going to have adverse effects when I take it. So, the next thing I want to address is that I found this study. This is a really new study. Um, it's not a really new study, but it's new to me, right? So. I asked my friendly chat TTP enabled app about uh, nutrient recycling and what it does and what nutrient recycling does in the body. And so there are several new studies, but then they're all within the last, you know, you know, 20, 30 years or so. But um, I asked Koala and I, might exercise affect the quantity of vitamin and minerals recycled in the human body? Cite relevant sources in MLA format. 
You want to that. It's really that. Yes, exercise can affect the quantity of vitamins and minerals recycled in the human body. Physical activity can increase absorption and utilization of vitamins and minerals, as well as improve gut health, which can enhance nutrient recycling. Here are some relevant sources: one, 2019. 2004, 2015, 994, and 2011. These sources suggest that exercise can improve nutrient recycling by promoting gut health, enhancing nutrient absorption and utilization, and increasing vitamin and mineral receptor expression in skeletal muscle. However, further research is needed to fully understand the mechanisms by which exercise affects nutrient recycling in the human body, right? And so I'm like thinking, okay, so I know so this probably explains why I'm able to ride so well. And so B-complex vitamins are some of those vitamins that get recycled, right? And then I realized that B-complex vitamins play a role in, in generating ATP. And then ATP helps to provide energy balance for the body. And ATP uh, is needed um to promote energy balance so that you're healthy, you don't get colds and sick and stuff like that, right? So you don't get a cold. So a lot of your immune system revolves around energy balance. So when your energy balance is off, your immune system can be a little bit impaired, right? So when I'm biking like, you know, for five hours and in that fifth hour I'm riding exceptionally well, I'm realizing that exercise is probably generating a lot of these gains that I'm seeing on the bike because our B vitamins are getting recycled. So I asked my friendly chat GTP enable app, which B vitamins play a role in generating ATP in a site relevant sources in MLA format. Several B complex vitamins play a role in generating ATP, which is understandable because they are coenzymes for protein, fat, and carbs. According to those sources, there are that your sub B complex vitamins play a role in your ATP. Like thiamine is involved in the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA, a key step in the production of ATP through the Krebs cycle. Uh, riboflavin is a component of flavin adenine um, that nucleotide and flavin mononucleotide coenzymes that are involved in the electron transport chain which produces ATP. So you can see here, like these are definite specific pathways which energies create through B-complex vitamins. One thing I should also say that, you know, on, on this ride, another thing that happened was I, in mile 80 or so, my only I stopped at a stop and I picked up grapes, red grapes, and I put them in in my back pocket of my shirt and I'm eating these red grapes and trying to figure out, you know, why I was writing so well for the longest time. I thought it was because grapes had sirtuins in them. Grapes do not contain sirtuins, but they do contain compounds that activate sirtuin activity. Sirtuins play a role in ATP production. So do B-complex vitamins. Yes, sirtuins are a class of proteins that are involved in regulating cellular processes such as metabolism, stress response, and aging, and they have been shown to affect ATP production through various mechanisms. Here are several relevant sources. And these sources describe how sirtuins can affect ATP production through a variety of mechanisms, including regulation of mitochondrial function and biogenesis, modulation of metabolic pathways, and regulation of cellular stress responses. Sirtuins have been shown to play a key role in maintaining cellular energy balance and promoting ATP production, which is essential for cellular metabolism and function. So yeah, those essential functions of energy balance and promoting ATP productions are, are you know, all in line with sirtuins, with sirtuins, and B-complex vitamins, in which B-complex vitamins, as we demonstrated through this research, gets recycled in the human body and exercise plays a role in how it gets recycled, right? This is amazing stuff, amazing stuff. So you can see where, you know, you can get gains even after you thought you've reached your plateau. So anyway, it's always stuff, more stuff to know. If you're looking for help with reaching your fitness goals or wellness goals, seek a fitness professional. If you want help from me, there's resources in this video, on this YouTube channel, and at myheartgame.com. I'm Srini. I hope you reach your fitness goals, and I'll talk to you next week.